Hey everyone, welcome back to the Tina Blaze Show. I'm your host, Christina Graysonette, also known as Tina Blaze, and I have a very, very special guest for you all today. So I'm going to be interviewing none other than Wes Watkins. So Wes Watkins is a celebrity drummer, author, and entrepreneur. So he's basically the jack of all trades. So I'm super excited to have him. Let's welcome Wes Watkins. Hey, hey, what's going on? Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. And uh, I know we spoke a couple of se minutes ago. Once again, I love your Monstars. Uh, so I, dope. I love Space Jam. <laughs> I feel like every, not every kid, but I mean, if you're, even if you're not a basketball fan, like Space Jam is just a classic movie, you know? Must see. Period. <laughs> It is a must see, and I'm a huge fan of Bugs Bunny and, of course, Michael Jordan. So <laughs> we're on the same page. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Wes, I'm super excited to have you on my show today. So you are actually the very first musician that I've ever had, um, uh, artist, but I've never had someone who was part of a band. You know. Yeah. So I'm super excited to speak with you, um, and I know that you have been, you know, working for quite some time. Uh -huh. um, but you're also an author and an entrepreneur, so you pretty much do everything, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Got to. Of course. So, yeah, I kind of want to just get started with, um, I guess, your music, right? So as a drummer, in my eyes, I think that's one of the best instruments to play. Um, and it's mostly, yes, it's mostly because I just feel like, um, you know, whenever a band starts to play, like even watching like, you know, an award show, whenever someone brings out a band, uh, the drums kind of stand out. Like everyone gets ready for the drums, you know? I feel like the drums in itself kind of brings everyone together. Um, so I do want you to, of course, talk about like how you got started with music and maybe who or what influenced you to get started. Yeah, so uh, I got started in music. Uh, my dad, he plays drums. So literally from the first day I was born, he had drumsticks in my hand, like just been that way like he used to say it all the time but then he really showed me pictures of like oh you for real put drumsticks in my hand when i was born okay cool <laughs> so you know um, yeah so of course my dad and then um grew up in church playing you know and then it kind of went from there um my dad uh my dad had bands you know i used to go listen to his band in the basement when he, uh, they come over jam and go to gigs with my dad and stuff like that so like I said, then, you know, ended up in church and I ended up playing for go-go bands and, you mm -hmm. know, ended up to start playing and for different artists. And then I started touring and everything like that. So that's how that whole thing happened. Um, one of my big, my, my main influences, honestly, is, is my dad um, and my cousin's name, Larry Dennis. He plays in my band with me now. He plays percussion. But mm -hmm. growing up, I had, I always went after those two trying to, imitate what they were doing you know what i'm saying and then my daddy started you know as i started growing older start uh getting turned on to other other drummers you know to start looking at uh like tony williams dennis chambers and billy cobham lewis belts and buddy rich and a whole bunch of other people i know you probably might not know but it was like you know <laughs> it was in that field like that that really started inspiring me you know what i'm saying and, and, and pushing me to the direction i'm in now that's amazing. I love it. I love that your dad is your biggest influence. I mean, yeah. not many people can say that, believe it or not. So yeah. um, he still plays today for real. Like he Wow. Like, yeah. He Does he yeah. tour as well or he, he just No, nah, he doesn't tour. He um he just plays here, but um, you know, he just did a gig like the other day. But you know, just to, for the simple fact that he's still playing, like that's you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like my father's in the sixties and he's still gigging out here, like and getting it. <laughs> <laughs> i like that That's yeah amazing. you guys are very talented <laughs> that's dope Thank you. Um, and in terms of music like you know not everyone can read music uh when i was younger i played the clarinet for a few few years uh -huh. um you know i found it difficult to read it at first until after a while um so do you guys i'm assuming you guys write your own music is that right yeah. okay. we, we we produce our own um mm -hmm. I've played in band and I've done the marching band thing. I know how to read. Now the gigs I do, am I required to read? No. You know what I'm saying? And I haven't read in a very long time, you know? So, you know, um, I get the calls for the, I, I pick up 
I can pick up something I can hear once and I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So I fall into that category. So I'm the last minute. That's why I do the tours I do because I can hop right on without a practice and as long as it ain't nothing crazy and be good and you know. So um yeah, but it's I don't have anything against it, but I just in my field I don't have to worry about the reading part. But right. it, but it's very great if people do know how to read. If you know how to read and you know how to play with feel and you know how to learn on spot, that just gets you many more calls and many more gigs headed your way so that you can stay consistently busy. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. That's that's awesome. And um it's funny that that kind of reminds me a little bit of um you know fantasia the singer mm -hmm. i know for a while she actually didn't know how to read in general not just music. Right. just a yeah period yeah 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 that's yeah. kind of similar to that in a sense too because obviously you know how to read it but you know once you hear a sound you, you're able to play that same exact sound but with her she was able to hear you know the lyrics in a song obviously and she was able to sing it so that just kind of reminded me of that got you yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And so your group, um, your group is called Got My Own Sound, right? Um, so when did you guys create this group and who created the actual title? Because I mean, I love it, right? You've got your own sound. So you're, yeah. you're different, right? You want to stand out. Yep. So how did you, how did that entire thing come about? Um, got My Own Sound, I created Got My Own Sound back in like 2009. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing is, God, it wasn't even for a band. Got my own sound was actually a clothing line at first. Oh, so, yeah, I was um I was trying to do the clothing thing, so I had got my own sound on hats and shirts and stuff because got my own sound is not necessarily for the sound. Got my own sound is like you're, it's a metaphor, so it's just like I'm my own person. I do my own thing. I'm me. I'm unique. You know, like for me, I don't like to dress like everybody. I, everybody go right. I always go left. You tell me everybody's wearing suits tonight. I'm going to show up in a vest. That's just me. So it's got my own sound. You stand out, you know. So like I said, so it started off as a clothing line. And then I didn't really bring it around to the band part until 2013. I started putting um the band together. Um and we recorded the first album that dropped in 2015 you know or 16. one of those two i forgot <laughs> but it was around that around that time frame yeah and then um you know it's, it, it really it really just started catching on and stuff like that so you know when i play again everybody just associates it with hey he got his own sound because he plays he's unique when he plays you know and it just stuck and i just kept running with it you know mm -hmm still growing and still more people finding out as the days go by, you know? Right. That's awesome. That is so dope. I, I, it's funny. Uh, one of my biggest wishes, like I've always, I always wish I was able to sing. I just think the most beautiful gifts to ever have. And in my head, I'm like, man, if I, if I knew how to sing, I'd have my own band. Like, <laughs> I... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, oh my God, that's just so beautiful. That's um... a... <laughs> Awesome. Um, so, I, you know, during the pandemic, it's it's been pretty tough for everyone, you know. So yeah. I, um, how have things changed for you um, after the pandemic now that things are starting to open up? And also, um, have you learned anything about yourself? Because I feel like a lot of people have during the pandemic. I feel like I, I just kind of been, I don't know, I'm a little bit more humble. Like I've always been humble, but I'm super, yeah, yeah. I appreciate certain things now because of the pandemic. That's I agree. Um, the pandemic, honestly, was one of the best things to happen to me because at first, um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I thought my thing went on to my, my ears, my earpiece. I was like, what in the heck? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, you know, it was one of the best things that happened to me because it sat me down. Like prior to the pandemic, I was gigging so much my mind stopped going into entrepreneur mode because I was playing so much. And granted, that's a good thing, you know, especially as a musician to, to be consistent. Like I stopped, I stopped touring back in 2019. So to be home and working the amount that I was working was great, but I started getting so comfortable and just playing so much that I started taking away from my vision from the entrepreneur part. So when we couldn't gig no more, now I'm home. So it's like, okay, 
what are you going to what are you going to do you know what i'm saying so um yeah i started coming up with everything like any idea i had i said man i'm going to i'm going to go with it you know i was still able to do studio work um i even had went back and got a nine to five for like a few months because i was just like man like you know what i want to be able to i just i had so much i want to do so i, like, I want to invest in my ideas that I had. And I was like, you know, I want to get it straight out from straight out the mud. I don't want nobody vessel. I went and got the job. So anyways, this whole pandemic, it pushed me so much and gave me a newfound hunger to go above and beyond what I was already doing. Mm -hmm. So I went into triple overdrive. And so during this pandemic, I wrote three children's books. Wow. Oh, Wes, I can't hear you. Sorry, right, can you hear me? Now I can hear you, yeah. Oh, man, shoot, hold on. I don't even know what... I'll get the video back real quick. Ah! Yeah. Hold on one sec. Let me see. How we... I don't even know what the heck people do. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Sorry. Right. So during this pandemic, I wrote three children's books, an e-book. I started my own fedora hat line. Brim has to uh, that be out um, within the next couple months, and then I also um, just started my own drumstick line, my drumstick company. Yes, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And so, do you have a, a child? Is that kind of what? I, yeah, I have two. Uh, my son is thirteen, and my daughter she just turned two on Thursday, on the twenty fourth. Oh, happy belated to her! How cute! Yep. Amazing. Yep. I love it. I, I love children. That's awesome. I, I love the whole children's book um, thing, you know, because I mean, obviously like children, a lot of them don't like to read. Right. But I think that when you create a book for them, they're going to want to read. Right. Yeah. Um, are you able to maybe give us a little snippet of what they're about? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, no problem. Yeah. So um, it's called uh, I'm, I'm actually going back and forth with the titles right now. But the thing is, the whole book is created for kids and their fathers. So, um, you know, with everything, especially as black men, as us being killed in the news, you see us being gunned down. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like as fathers in general, but especially as black men, you always have this stereotype like black men don't take care of the kids or they don't do this. And for me, I know a lot of great fathers and especially I know a lot of great black fathers. So mm -hmm. I was and I wanted to do so. That's one part of it. And then the other part of me doing this book was because there are kids out there who don't have a dad. And I never want them to also always just see us in the news killed or seeing a black man in the news being killed or you're hearing about it. So I'm like, man, let me create a book so that a kid that may not have a father. Okay. Oh, you good? Sorry. <laughs> nah, both having problems out here. <laughs> My phone just popped off. My apologies. Nah, you good. You good. You good. But, uh, but yeah, it was like, man, I, I wanted to write the book so that so that kids who may not have a father figure in their life, they have mm -hmm. a book to look to that, hey, man, you know, even if I don't have a dad in my life, maybe I can grow to be something like this or, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So um, I incorporated my kids in the book. Um, and so it really just talks about why fathers need their kids and why kids need their fathers. Like my mm -hmm. kids are everything to me, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, you know, they give me life and being able to speak into their lives and help impact their lives and stuff like that. It's just like a, it's just a book to make kids and fathers feel good. Any parent, I mean, I'm, a mother could read it too, but it's just like, I wanted to, I haven't seen a children's book that has something to really do with just the dad part. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not married. So it's just me and my kids, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, so I came from that part. So, um, yeah. And so, and like I said, it's going to be, uh, for babies to five years old. I wrote one book, kind of like nursery rhyme type style. And then for the six to 10 year olds, I put a little bit more in it for them to understand. You know what I mean? So, right. uh, yeah. And then I'm also, and then we're also going to do a coloring book for it too. So it's going to be two children's books plus a coloring book. Oh, I love that. Uh, yeah. That that's that's super dope. I'm sure they're gonna love it as well. And yeah. do you know where we can find those books? Are you gonna sell them on like your personal website, Amazon, or? 
it's going to be available everywhere. Amazon is going to, uh, usually we do Amazon, Barnes and Noble, mm-hmm. and it's a, it's a site called uh, Lift Bridge Publishing. That's that's my publish the publishing company I go through, and I'll have some on hand too. Um, I'm actually the illus- one of the illustrators because I have two different illustrators doing both books, so mm-hmm. you can have two different styles. You know what I'm saying? Right. But uh, actually sent me a sample today, so um, I'm like it's looking good right now. Like he's they they're getting me finished like ahead of schedule. So if everything happens the bo- if everything happens the way it's supposed to. The books will be dropping probably mid August, end of August, around that time frame. Okay, that's yep. awesome. We all have something to look forward to. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Exactly. Awesome. So I know that you uh, released your fourth album called mm-hmm. Shine Music. Moonshine Music. Yep. That's awesome. That's amazing. Um, and I noticed I uh, actually read your article recently, and it's. Oh. It said that you were, um, I guess your your album, it debuted at number one on the iTunes chart for the jazz genre. Yes, which is amazing. So congratulations. And I feel like, you know, w- once you reach number one, it's like, can you go higher than that? You know? So uh, what, what do you think? You know, do you, I mean, I'm sure you have other goals that you want to accomplish, but um, how do you guys feel? Well, first of all, how, how did you feel, right? You know, you know, the crazy thing is the second album that came out hit number one. So, oh. for this, yeah. So the second album called Welcome to Our World, that hit number. We were number one for. I think it, I think we just we were number one for like one day. And then this one, the fourth album was number one for like two or three days. But it felt yeah, it, it felt great because it's like as an independent artist, you don't have the backing of a major company. You know, um, I put all of my funds up for this. So, you know, yes, my band, they help promote and they help push too. But it's like when something's your own, you go above and beyond that because it's your own. Something that the brand you created, you know what I'm saying? So like the band push and I just kept pushing. We kept, I was in my, my phone texting it to people, sending emails, DMs. Hey, go check the album out, do this. And so for everybody to actually do it and they actually liked it man it was like one of the best feelings because the music was recorded in 2019 the album was supposed to be out in 2020 but then we fell behind and the pandemic happened right that we were going to release it we had to end up pushing it and so it kept and so at first i was getting frustrated and then i was just like you know what i'm gonna just wait be patient so everything was finished back in december but I was trying to wait for the perfect time. And then right around the time the world started back opening up, I'm like, okay, it's time. And, you know, and people, and, and they're still streaming it. They're still getting it. So it's, it's, it's exciting. But yeah. for, there is more room to go, like, and grow. Um, yeah, it was dope coming out number one on the iTunes charts. But it's like now I want to get the number one on the billboards. That's my, you right. know, like, that's my thing. So it's like, you know, I celebrated the win. But I don't like to get too stuck on the win that I lose focus. Like, oh yeah, we's number one, we cool. Nah, it's 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 that was fine. You still got work to do, you know. Right. So yeah, but it it felt great though. It felt amazing. Oh, I'm sure. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> and honestly, I will say, sky's the limit, right? Like, obviously, yeah. other things that you want to achieve, and I'm sure you will. I mean, you're going down the right path. So, thank uh, you. Of course. Congrats again to you guys. That's Thank awesome. You. And how many are in your band again? Uh, seven, including myself. So it's me, um, Larry Dennis on percussion, Izzy Lemons on guitar, Keith Hammond on guitar, right near Hydnet on bass, Elliot Jefferson on keys, and Johnny still on keys. So, yeah. That's, That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple more questions for you. Um, so, you know, we were just talking about biggest accomplishments, and I know that you've toured with a couple of ce- celebrities, including Chrisette Michelle, who I love. Well, um, I, I didn't I didn't tour with her. We were oh, doing, you did? No, no. So I, we, we we were doing work on a, um, it was a, a single she dropped last summer. Uh, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't even know the name of it. But um, we, I worked on that joint originally with her. And then she, so she, the crazy thing, she was supposed to be on this album on Moonshine Music. Mm. but then that's when the pandemic hit and all everything you know what i'm saying so yeah yeah, like 
it, she was going to be on the album. Masego was going to be on the album. Like, oh, this Dre was going to be even better than what it was. I was that's why I was like, ah, <laughs> you know. But um, like I said, I, I've worked with her in the studio, so I haven't toured with her though. Oh, gotcha. I want to make sure I, yeah, yeah, yeah make sure I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I must have read it wrong, or in my head, I probably just. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I just, I just make sure because you, man, music community is small, and people be like, man, he ain't never taught. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Um, so um, when I was reading the Baltimore article about you, um, I know that you did mention being depressed. Um, you know, unfortunately, you had a couple of uh, almost suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I tried. Yeah. Yeah. So you were basically at your lowest point in life. Um, and I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm also happy that you were able to kind of overcome that. So yeah, yeah. I want to ask you, um, you know, what did you do to overcome that? Did you go to therapy or what was it that kind of helped you in, in that point of your life? Main two things was I prayed <laughs> like, like, like never before. And then it was, I started dealing with the issues I had. So it's like, I knew what the reason for the depression was. It was because I didn't want to deal with the issues that I had that I, all the issues I tried to sweep under the rug. So it's like, as a man, and when you're growing up, you're, we're told, you know, you're supposed to, and not, and my family never even told me this, but it's like, you develop this when you out with your boys or you're growing up that you gotta be tough. You suck it up. You all right. You don't cry. You ain't got to deal with, you know what I'm saying? And so you start thinking that, oh, this situation is nothing I could deal with. I'd be straight. And the thing is, you're actually not straight. And so, once I started going back and tracing certain problems and going to the root of it, I'm like, oh, shoot, I never dealt with that. So I started drinking heavy because I didn't want to think and deal with those issues that I that happened because I was afraid of the consequences or I was afraid of what people may think about me. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, and then you're told you, you just developed this thing that I can't talk to nobody. I have to keep that in and mm -hmm. you keep. So then over the years, you're keeping so much in. Right. And that's what happened, you know? And so it was like, I did go to therapy, but it honestly, the therapy wasn't the thing that got me to deal with everything mm -hmm. because it's like, I feel like when it comes to depression, we know what the problem is. So you just have to make a decision of, am I going to deal with it or am I not going to deal with it? Because right. with therapy, guess what they're going to make you do? Deal with it. That's why you're at therapy to talk, to get it out. So I really had to just, I had to, I said, I said to myself, I said, man, listen, we, we got to handle this. Cause I'm like, it got to a point like, yo, when I'm, I was drinking, I was started drinking like six, seven in the morning. You know what I'm saying? I was drinking all the way up until the night. I was a functioning al alcoholic. Like, it was bad. Like, it, I was drinking moonshine and was still able to function. That's when I knew it was bad. Like, I'm drinking moonshine straight. And it's not affecting me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So, like I said, so the main thing was, like, like I honestly, for real, just prayed. And I really just started dealing with the issues and I started going back to people having conversations and I had to, I had to prepare myself that, uh, things that have, that may have gone on in the past, everybody may not be forgiving. Everybody may not want to deal with you. And you have to accept that. Right. And so, because it's like, at this point, you just have to deal with it so that you can move on. Mm hmm I started going back. I started having conversations with people and stuff like that. And then once I started dealing with everything, like it came off. So it was like, well, there's honestly no reason for me to drink like this because I was just drinking to not think about it. Mm. But now that I've dealt with it, I don't need this as my crutch to deal with this because I've dealt with it. So now you get what I'm saying? Right. So it was like it took a it took some time for me to gradually come down and stuff like that. But like, yeah, it was it was it was a rough process. Mm -hmm. you know? But I I I respect it and I love the process because 
that process built me up for how I am today. Right. So now you get a whole nother West than you did years ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Know how to deal with things. I don't mind facing things head on. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm okay with everything not going my way. I'm okay with if I make a decision, there's a good consequence or a bad consequence. You just got to watch what you do. You know what I mean? And it just built me for who I am. And so like, that's how you, that's why I feel like I have the confidence and the strength to to do everything that I do right now because of that entire process. Right. Definitely. And I appreciate you, you know, talking about that and yeah. comfortable talking about that. Um, and that's super huge, especially in our community. And you're absolutely right, especially with black men. Um, you know, we're taught to just black people in general, we're taught to have to deal with things, you know. Yep. Um, a lot of our parents, like my parents are from Haiti, so they, you know, immigrants in general, yep. you know, they struggle a lot, you know. So like with them, they're like, oh, you know, I, ha I had to go through this to become who I am today. Like you have to go through struggle and you yeah. really have to, you know, right. like you said sometimes, you know, if you are struggling or if you are going through something, you kind of do have to deal with it because if you ignore those red flags, yep. it's just going to build up and then turn into something that you don't want to happen. Right. So yeah. um, it's, it's tough. It really is tough. And it's, it's great that you spoke about that. And I'm hoping that people that watch this can, understand that it's okay to go through what you're going through and if you need to try to seek help right I'm gonna like this i have so many conversations with people on this and like you said like i always tell people like man if you have to go talk to somebody go talk it's nothing wrong with going to talk to a therapist it doesn't mean you're crazy it doesn't mean something's wrong with you you just have something you need to deal with and you need an outlet let that therapist be your outlet let somebody that's gone through the same thing that you've gone through be able to help and guide you through whatever it is you have going on. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know, when you get to the place of trying, and not even wanting, but where I was, where I tried to take my life a few times, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was at a whole nother low. Like, like that's <laughs> that's a low you don't even want to... I I took pills. I put the gun to my head. I tried cut. Like, I, I don't went through everything outside of trying to take acid. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you never want to get to a place where you're that rock bottom that you can't get back up because everybody doesn't always come back from it. Right. You know, so that's why I was just like, you know, and that's why I take that approach. Like I said, I make sure I deal with everything because I honestly feel like if I ever went back that way, I probably wouldn't come back. Because it like that, that was it. That took about two years for me to really get myself back to 100 and 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 make a transformation like it was hard you know what i'm saying right so yeah but i have i'm always comfortable talking about it like i i i, I don't shy away from it because it's people that that need that need to hear it coming mm -hmm. from somebody that's been through it right mm -hmm. i totally agree and i appreciate that again you us <laughs> no problem no problem you have less than two minutes left so i do want you to of course kind of um, you know, maybe quickly talk about, um, you know, the type of projects or tours that you're currently working on. And of course you can plug in your social media. As well. Yeah. Right now. Um, man, I just been hitting the studio with some of everybody. I can't even think of a list right now, honestly speaking. Sure. Um, yeah, I got up right now. I'm uh, also getting ready to work on another, um, another EP that's going to come out. I can't release the artist name right now, but it's a few, dope industry artists that's that we actually just got everything together that's we're going to collab on so i'm excited about that um and like i said man you know the children's books those are coming out those are like my 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 big things right now in front of me that i'm excited to get done um but yeah but if y'all looking to follow me you can follow me on instagram at west w-e-s got my own sound my band name is got my own sound underscore uh the website is got my own sound dot com we have a show coming up in Richmond, Virginia at the Hoff, uh, July 30th. Um, Y'all can check us out there. Uh, it's a few more shows coming up. I can't even think where right now. But for the most part, that's it right there. Y'all can follow me there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wes. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. You've got about 30 seconds left. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you all for watching. Um, my name is Christina, aka Tina Blaze. You all can follow me on Instagram as well at Tina Blaze. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>